Hello and welcome to another Procreate tutorial where today I'm going to teach you step by step on how you can create a design like this. Now this entire tutorial uses just a simple dry ink brush and the soft air brush as well. We're going to keep it nice and loose and you can see if you actually zoom in a lot of these details are very simple shapes just lovely little sort of squiggles on top of a basic shape underneath and I promise you step by step we'll be able to make our way through this design and trust the process from start to finish. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the description down below. You can grab the canvas, the palette and that's basically everything you're going to need. As always when you're finished please be sure to tag me in your creations over on Instagram. You can share them with my Discord community as well and if you didn't already know I post exclusive tutorials every single month to my patrons and the catalogue now sits at 80 exclusive tutorials. So if you want to get access to all of those additional tutorials you can hit the link in the description down below and come and share your support and with all that said let's get started. So once you've created your canvas size, we're also going to need to add in this drawing guide. So if we go up to our actions, we're going to go ahead and turn on the drawing guide until this turns blue and then edit the drawing guide and change the grid size to 500 pixels. And you can pick a color at the top there that you feel is something that you can see nice and easily and then hit done. It's going to help us sort of lay out our design to a similar sort of ratio to one another. Now we're going to go ahead, first of all, and on the uh, background color, we're going to go ahead and tap on that. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this color here in the bottom right of the palette. We're then going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the middle color in the far right column. We're going to go to our layers, making sure we're on this empty layer. We're going to go to our selection tool using the option of rectangle and color fill turned on. We're going to go ahead and probably draw a box round about sort of here for scale to start with and let go. Then tap on your selection tool and then tap on your adjustments and go to a Gaussian blur and then blur that from left to right so you get up to something around about sort of 43 percent or around that mark we can adjust this later on now we're going to go ahead and get started we're going to start at the front and make our way backwards so we're going to create a new layer we're going to go to our colors we're going to grab this color here at the bottom of the second column we're going to go to our brush and we're going to make sure we're in inking and the dry ink brush we're going to use this predominantly throughout the whole of this design and the brush size is going to be set to 10 percent to start with now this is a sort of messy kind of brush and that's what we want. I want you to keep it nice and loose. It's just gonna be nice and fun. So the first shape we're gonna start with, it's gonna start here roughly and it's gonna end just over here. So it's just gonna end in this sort of space here. So you can put little markers there if you like and you can just create a nice sort of bumpy, lumpy sort of shape. This is somewhat gonna be hidden in the background anyway. It's just gonna be hidden behind some flowers. So just create like a little shape like this and drag and drop your color in on that right hand side. If you get too much of a dotted line, just simply go back over it. And then on the left hand side, we'll do exactly the same, except the mark is going to be roughly here and it's going to exit just about up here. And we're going to go ahead and create again another sort of lovely bumpy shape. You want to press with a little bit of pressure and make sure it's nice and sort of pressed down and quite firmly down just so that you've got a nice blocky shape. A little something like that will do. Drag and drop the color in. And then we're going to get started with adding the flowers to this. So we're going to create a new layer. And while we're here, we'll swipe on these both from left to right and group them together. This empty layer we created, we don't want it clipped. We're going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here in the bottom left of the palette. Now we're going to go ahead and start to create some of the very basic sort of just floral areas. So I'm just going to sort of wobble my pen up and down, creating like a large chunk of flower here to start with. And maybe it just sort of comes in from the bottom there and also exits on the right and I can drag and drop the color in into that space. And then as we get progressively sort of more into this space here, we wanna get a little bit smaller with our shapes. Now you can let them somewhat overlap. You're gonna to need to remember in your own mind sort of how you went about sort of laying out your colors and your little objects and shapes. So if they overlap, that's fine. But again, just remember sort of where you wanted that initial shape to be. And if they overlap, you're just gonna to need to, in a minute when we get into highlights, just sort of bring that shape back out and back to life a bit more. And we can adjust some of these, maybe make them a little bit more wobbly here and there. And we're gonna progressively, as I say, get smaller as we get further back. And some of them can come in like a little bit more of a sort of uh, cloudy shape almost there. Drag and drop the color in. You can squeeze some into some gaps. And if you do wanna just run one like here, straight in behind that one, that's fine. Again, it's just about sort of keeping an eye on where you've laid things out and then making sure when we get to the highlights in a second, you know where to sort of go back to and sort of reintroduce the shape of it a bit more. Here in the center, I'll go ahead and create another 
big shape there. And we're just trying to leave little gaps here and there where the sort of the, the individual parts of like this just red floral bush are. So just make little gaps as you go further back. You can let some then just sort of glimpse over the edge of that a little bit more. And we'll, we'll just bring that in. And we'll make our way up towards this sort of top area here, which is where we're going to start to think about sort of wrapping this area up a little bit more. And I'll create another tiny one just above it that just makes its way out a little bit. There we go. And that's all you need to do for the moment. We're going to repeat that while we're sort of working on that concept down here at the bottom. So I'm going to create like a large wobbly area down here. And I'm going to let that one run all the way to the edge. And I'll just fill it in so it fills up the bottom area there. And again, as you make your way further back, create some shapes and then just remember where you've laid those shapes out. So I know that I created that sort of wobbly line there and then this one's going to sit in behind it. And we'll create another sort of big shape here, it runs all the way to the edge. And we'll bring that one in behind. So everyone's just going to look different. You don't need to match up to mine perfectly. Have some fun creating your own sort of floral areas. And this whole design is meant to be nice and easy, nice and loose. So. Just have some fun. Okay, another sort of big one there. Just little random shapes like that, almost little sort of bush shapes. And then as you get a little bit higher, you can sort of let them get a little bit skinnier in terms of height. You know, maybe this one's a little bit thinner. There's nice thin ones as they get further back and they can run into some of the gaps too. And then maybe we go ahead and just sort of let one just run over the top here towards the far right edge. But in a minute, we'll separate it with highlights and we'll leave like a little gap almost as if this sort of leans over the top of a piece of rock almost. You're just trying to imagine and just be quite creative with sort of how you're laying it out. And just as long, I always say, as long as you can create a story about it, you know, oh, this is hanging over the edge here as like a little bit of a flower, then, you know, that's all that matters as long as you can explain it really. And that will do for that area. I think maybe actually I can just get away with just adding in a tiny one here at the top. Now, once you've added in all your little flower areas there, we're going to go ahead and we'll tap on the layer and we will alpha lock it. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the middle color in the first column and your brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush. We're going to fluctuate pretty much between these two brushes the whole time. Now with a brush size probably around about sort of 16%, you want to create a bit of a gradient. So you want to make it nice and red at the top here and then just progressively get a little bit lighter till you create a lovely blend between those two colors something a little bit like this and then move over to the left hand side and repeat nice and strong at the top so I'm like blocking it in right now with some good firm pressure and then just letting that blend out towards the bottom lovely stuff then we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer we're going to go to our color and we're going to grab the one in the top left of the palette switch your brush back to inking now if you want to you can go right to the top of your brush library and go to the option of recent and you'll be able to see all your recent brushes and I'm going to switch back to the dry ink brush and jump in here between these. Now with this brush size, I'm going to keep it at the 10% mark. What we're going to do is, as I said, we're just going to highlight the edges. So we're going to keep it nice and light over here and then just sort of squiggle your pen along sort of the shape lines that you created. And that's what I mentioned earlier. You want to remember sort of the shapes and then even create some additional shapes. Like let this line run into here, for example, and then maybe this one just, just nicely runs off to the edge and we can also highlight this tiny little bit of sort of uh, flower area there. And you can add the odd sort of little tiny uh, area here like this if you want to. I'm not going to get into too many of those, but you know, feel free to uh, just sort of tinker as much as you like down here, creating some fun little bushy areas. You can always come back to it at the end if you've got the layer count. And then again, we're going to remember where we sort of created these bushes that sit in front of one another. And again, just like the odd kind of small detail here and there. I've got this one here too. I need to remember where that one sits. And I'll let that one just run all the way to the end. And again, I'll introduce some little smaller areas just in front of it. And then this area here has quite a lot of overlap. And again, that's where you're trying to remember where you laid out your bushes. You don't have to also do the entirety of the top line of it. You can just sort of let that sort of die into there and then just let that take over at this point up here and again, add in any extra details. This here looks like one big blob, but I can actually see three there in my mind. So I'm just going to separate them by doing that. And then I'll bring in a line for this one here and let that sort of just fade down this area. Maybe add in a detail on there or two. 
and then introduce again another sort of line here. So you're just trying to break up your shapes and introduce these lovely little sort of areas like this. And go along here. And I'm only going to do up here sort of on that left edge a bit more because that's where kind of the lighting's coming from, which we will optionally introduce right towards the end. But just a little bit more on that left hand side of some of these bushes will just just help the uh, the highlights sort of take their position on the bushes. So you should end up with something really lovely and simple like this. And then we're going to do exactly the same over here, but with the sort of consideration that your light source is probably up here. So it's going to be more of a top heavy light source. So Again, look at your shapes, look at what you created, and then try and just create those lovely areas of separation, and then any additional extra little wobbles and little details that you wanna add. Here I've got sort of one massive long one, so let's just separate that with like a sort of squiggly line over the top here, and then I'll reintroduce the shape a bit more by just introducing, again, another line to break that up. It's quite a repetitive process over the top of this one. Let's let that one just come along that, there too. Let's really kind of add some wobbles into these ones. Now I don't wanna add them across the entirety of every single line. So I'm gonna try and just sort of let a few of them just sort of just thin out a little bit more and just give them sort of a little bit of highlight, but nothing too much. And you can see I'm also in certain areas just trying to adjust some of the shapes as well. You know, if I can introduce a, an additional sort of uh, wobble or a larger sort of, you know, little bit at the top here, like so, just to fluff out the shape a little bit more, you can do so at this point, you know, really adjust kind of the shapes of them. I'm going to just introduce a couple of extra smaller little flicks of detail here and there. Little wobbles here and there. Lovely stuff. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to tap on the layer and we're going to go ahead and alpha lock it. We're then going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the middle color again in that first column. We're going to go to our brush library and go back to the soft brush under airbrushing or again in your recent section. And again, we're just now going to go ahead and sort of blend from the bottom. So go left to right and then just blend lightly over the top of it until you end up with like a bit of a sort of light to dark kind of uh, fade there at the bottom. So go left to right and then just introduce that little bit of fade. It will still be there, but it's this lovely little sort of gradient look to it. The next step is to introduce a rock that's gonna sit in this area here. Now you've grouped these together. I'm concerned about everybody's layer count. So if you need to, you can tap on this and flatten it down. You won't be able to make too many sort of easy adjustments later on. So maybe just hold on to them if you can. But we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here again at the bottom of that second column. Your brush wants to be set back to the dry ink brush and uh, inking. Same size as before, so just 10 for the moment sort of uh, as we go. And we're gonna create a rock that sort of breaks up through the sort of staircase that we're gonna create. And it's gonna sort of have a point over here, which is gonna kind of then just run down like this. We're not gonna see this down here, but we do just need to run it all the way down to the sort of very bottom edge. And then I'm going to bring that in and then maybe create like a little sort of point outwards on there. And we're going to go from over here. We're going to just bring in like a little bit of color and then just sort of bring that across to here. And then from here, just go down and then drag and drop your color in. Now at the moment, you can see it's layered incorrectly. So we'll go to our layers and we'll drag it underneath that group that we just created. And now it sits in its position over here. Now, we're gonna go ahead then and add in the staircase because I don't want you to add detail in areas that's not really necessary at this current stage. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna put it in front of here for a moment and we're gonna create the circular sort of uh, spiral staircase. So we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here at the bottom of the fifth column. Your path itself, your staircase is gonna end roughly here. So we can put like a little horizontal marker. It's just, just under halfway in those bottom two grids. It's gonna make its way out towards here, and then it's gonna swoop around the nose and swoop all the way across. So I can go ahead now and just create like a, I'm gonna undo that little marker on its own, but I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of swoop this out, go around there and then all the way across like so. Then I'm gonna just drag out this top point a tiny bit more, and we're gonna go ahead and sort of swoop in towards the center point and then just go around here like so. And I've gone all the way round and down to the bottom and make sure your sort of lines 
a nice and somewhat sort of uh, solid and you can easily sort of get in there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this out a tiny bit more and let that kind of what will eventually just run in behind here and then round there. I just wanna sort of bring that a lot, lot closer to that emerging kind of cliff top. I'm imagining that this staircase is really, really high in the sky and then out of nowhere, there's just a big drop off and then this cliff is just punching its way through. So I'm just gonna block that in. And if I've gone all the way to the bottom here and all the way to the bottom here, I should be able to drag and drop my color in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it for a moment underneath that little point that we made. We're gonna tap on it and we're gonna go ahead and add a mask to it. The mask will be attached to the layer. We wanna make sure our color is set to black and our brush is set to the soft brush under airbrushing. We're gonna make sure that brush size is probably around about sort of 8%. And we're gonna blend this out at the bottom here. We're gonna prioritize our little path and you wanna kind of get it to the point where at the bottom here, it's almost looking like mist. So we're kind of trick, we're kind of erasing to aid the design, but also kind of, well, you know, maybe it's mist, you know, that kind of concept of just kind of tricking people into thinking it's something, but it's actually helping us just sort of tidy up the design a bit more. So I'm just gonna, increase sort of the, the flow of this. You would have noticed just then, if you go over here, you'll make it a little bit too transparent. So make sure you don't cover that area there. And then you should have this sort of emerging sort of cliff top here. We can then go ahead and create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to it. We'll go to our colors and we're gonna jump to the middle color in that second column. And your brush wants to go back to dry ink. And from here, we're just gonna simply create some sort of very sort of vertical kind of uh, angled nice sharp lines in the rock so just creating some fun big sharp gouges in the rock lovely big long streaks let some of them drag out you can make some a little bit more vertical as well and block in certain areas as well maybe there's like a big sort of uh, point here and then this emerges in behind it a little bit so just random small quite easy and dainty kind of details it's a little bit like this and you'll notice I've left the top because we're gonna add greenery on there anyway. If we go to our colors though, and we go to the color above it, the top of the second column, we can introduce a slightly brighter tone on top of those blues. So now I can really kind of just get in here and sort of make a few certain areas a little bit more sort of predominant and dominant in the scene. You know, just a couple of extra sort of scrapes down here. And you don't have to do it everywhere. You can leave your design if you really, really like it. To me, these just little extra colors. If you put the if you put the color we're adding now on top of the blue, it adds like a little highlight on top of it. So I'm kind of just adding additional highlights to the rock. And again, you'll notice I've left that top area completely left open. And I'll maybe introduce like a, a long, sharp line here or there, just on the end over here. We'll then go to our layers and create another new layer. It's not gonna be clipped, but what we will do is we'll swipe from left to right on the layer we just worked on and the actual cliff top shape there and group them together. This top layer here that we just created, we're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here, the top of the third column. We're gonna get started by adding in some greenery. Now you can jump to the larger size of like 47% here to add in some large areas of green space that you know do exceed the shape a little bit. Now be careful because it's very large, so kind of, Maybe even sort of pick some in between if you feel more comfortable where we're gonna just create areas of greenery on the top here. Lots of just lovely wobbly lines, just like we kind of did with those sort of bushes at the front down here, kind of just bushy kind of shapes. So these lovely colors here and I love the dry ink finish. It looks so cool. We'll add in another one up there and then another one here. Now we do wanna let this sort of greenery just run down some of the cliff type lines that we created. So I'm gonna block in over here and then where it starts to sort of fall off the side almost, we're imagining there's like a flat surface on the top. And then as they kind of come down the side, we can introduce the odd sort of area of greenery that just, you know, does make its way down sort of the edges here and a couple, not too low, but a couple that just do exceed that top space a bit more. And that's simply all you need to do. If we then go to our colors and grab the middle color in that third column, we can add some highlights to the top of them. So again, kind of similar to what we did before. We're just gonna introduce this sort of green. Now, I'm gonna drop it down to the 10% mark so I can be a bit more accurate. I can press with a bit more pressure, but ultimately, you know, just add in areas. And again, the light source is somewhat gonna be off to the left-hand side. So we're gonna brighten up sort of the left edges of some of these green parts. And then, you know, where it runs down the cliff edge as well, add in some green on them. 
definitely at this top point here I can add in some lovely big green bright areas here on the on the left side where they are really facing our light source the most lovely big green areas a couple of smaller little specks down towards the bottom is fine we'll then go ahead and just add, see where we can add in some additional sort of areas of green you can make nice little tiny smaller bushes and create again lots of those tiny little dashes here and there you can spend as long as you like on this stage just pause me I'll be here when you need me to move on but you can add in lots of small little sort of dashes and little sort of uh, little areas of greenery that are facing the light source just lots of little bumps and lumps and wiggles and squiggles bumps lumps wiggles and squiggles so you create something like that and again zoom out never get lost in those details as I always say you know zoom out and take a look at the entirety of the design and make sure you're happy with sort of the impression you're trying to pull off and you know let some of these lines that go down the side come up a bit more and maybe a couple that sort of to drag across maybe a little something like that then what we're going to do is once you've done that we're going to go to our colors and grab the bottom color here in that uh, third column and we're going to be a bit more sparing with this and just add it on sort of the top area so i'm going to go over the top of here and introduce on the top edge of that a little bit of a brighter highlight color so just going to add a few on here and again focusing it more on that top surface so i'm just going to add a few more there and then kind of just focus it away from this bottom area down here but you know maybe occasionally there's one that is getting some lighting where it's a slightly larger clump of greenery whatever this may be and that's fine and then i'll, I'll maybe actually just connect those two together and then maybe a little bit at the back there as well just some lovely sort of random highlights on that top surface and that's it that ledge is actually completely done again it's totally up to you you can tap on your group you can flatten it or we can just leave it and progress on now the next step we want to work on is actually the steps so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to tap on that layer i'm going to alpha lock it the first thing i'm then going to do is go up to my colors and grab this color hit the top of the fifth column your brush wants to be set to the option of soft brush again under airbrushing if you're jumping between them size about 11 percent i'm going to blend out from the top blend down creating a lovely sort of blend and gradient of color slightly brighter at the top gets nice and dark towards the bottom then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our layers we're going to go ahead and create a new layer we'll tap on it and we'll clipping mask it to it and we'll go to our colors we'll grab this color here the middle color in that fifth column Brush wants to go back to dry ink. The size is again 10% and we're gonna introduce the steps. So all I want you to do to start with is just create sort of horizontal lines, pop your finger on the screen that get progressively smaller as we make our way back. Don't worry about the fact that the shapes are a little bit wrong at the minute. We're gonna fix that in a second. Just as you make your way across all of here, we're just gonna progressively get slightly smaller as we go. And you can do different weights as well. That is perfectly fine. That one there didn't seem to like straight line effort we'll pop that in there you want to press down with a good amount of pressure where you can and again just as we get further back make them a little bit sort of closer together a little bit closer and we're going to fix the edges in a moment to make it look like steps rather than sort of a, a smooth sort of a circle s shape um just as we go so let's continue with these lines occasionally i may get some that are really close together and i'll just leave them and that's fine you can just have some variety in your steps maybe we don't want them to be sort of super perfect we don't want them to have too much uh you know perfect gap every single time and you know maybe some are going to be slightly bolder than others that is again is also fine i'm going to just make our way all the way up towards the top that one's got a bit too much of a gap so we'll undo that and continue on our way up the stairs zoom in on this top area where now we we've got quite a very sort of skinny sort of uh, height now so we've got to just try our best to try and get them in but if we don't you can just create some really thin lines like very very thin weighted lines that give the illusion of steps but they're just getting a little bit too far away now now as i mentioned we're going to go down to the base shape of it we're going to go ahead and tap on it and add a mask to it too we're going to make sure we're on the mask and our color is set to black and then every time you've drawn in a line then we're going to zoom in and we're going to take a look and where you can see a line and a line where there's a sort of curve here you just want to sort of bring that down to maybe sort of two-thirds down a bit of an angle and then just erase into here 
So you're creating the side profile of the step. So we're just sort of drawing in till we get to this sort of angle here and then just erase. If you get any excess, that's fine. Just, you know, run over the top of it or leave it. It may add to the character of the piece. It's totally up to you. It's meant to have a bit more of a looser aesthetic to it anyway. And now as we get progressively higher, we kind of want to sort of lose that a little bit. We don't want to be seeing the top of the step quite so much. We want to be sort of having almost like a proper vertical cut down. So you kind of just want to go down, meet the previous line and then go across. So go down, go across and then erase down here. And then this one here is slightly different. So we've got to go up from the bottom and then kind of create like a little bit of a step there. And as we make our way up towards this point, I don't want you to focus too heavily on this, but we are going to sort of cut into here a little bit. We are going to add in sort of shade in here. I just want to sort of block them in a tiny bit on the edges there because we are going to uh, add in shadows up there. And then up here, we follow the same principles. We go down and across, down and across, down and across. And again, we're going to shade that area up there. So don't stress too much in the, the very small steps. But we also need to do the same on the right hand side. So we go down and across, down and across, and then just follow that all the way up. And then this is just going to make it so much more apparent that they're steps and give us a lovely sort of uh, continuous raise in height throughout the whole of this piece. Lovely stuff. And that's all I want to do. Just a simple set of sort of cutouts there just to definitely make them look like steps. Now we are going to add in some basic shadows to start with. So we're going to go ahead and swipe from left to right on both of these layers for the steps and group them together. I always group things just in case we come back to them, but also you know that you can flatten a group down when we're done with it. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to clipping mask it into that stack. I'm going to go ahead and go to my brush and I'm going to change it to the soft airbrush and make it around about sort of about sort of 5% light sources coming across. So I'm just going to sort of darken up here. I'm going to go a bit smaller than that. I'm going to darken up this sort of corner here where this cliff tops maybe sort of blocking that. I'm going to push it off to the right as well, just a little bit more. And I'm also going to sort of preempt what we're going to do later. So I'm going to make the brush size about 5% and just sort of darken up the right hand side of the stairs just a little bit more over there. And again, preempting what we're going to do, I'm going to sort of darken up this area over here where we've got another sort of cliff top to add in or a little bush in front of it even. So just darken that up, up in that side there. Now, what I also want to do is I want to go back to the lines that we created for the steps. We're going to go back to our brush and make it the dry ink again. Probably want to drop it down to about sort of the 3% brush size, uh, depending on your pressure, but just occasionally just in fact, we will go back to the 10% and just press really lightly. That's probably a little bit too thin. I just want you to sort of run some sort of eroded sort of streaks through here and just sort of, you know, just somewhat adding in like very easy detail. You can tip your pen on its side and it will give you a much more fuzzy look to the lines, kind of like tipping a crayon or a pencil on its side. But just run some additional lines through some of the steps just to maybe sort of vary up the surface of it and make it look a little bit more untidy, a bit less polished. You don't need to make it go all the way to the top either. You can sort of just brush it in occasionally here and there. Like so, just to vary up the sort of, make it a bit more realistic, even though this is meant to be like a cartoon kind of look to it. A couple of lines just to break up that solid staircase look. So let's go ahead and basically replicate exactly what we did here, but in this gap here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. We're gonna collapse that group down. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer in front of the staircase. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab the bottom color in the second column again. And we're going to create sort of a bushy kind of shape along here that's going to somewhat run all the way to roughly around about sort of uh, here. And then we'll come straight down. So we're going to follow sort of the edge of the path up towards what will be the tippity top. And then we'll just create some lovely bumpy shapes in here. And once we get to the point of maybe here, we'll just let that sort of tip down and drift off. Now this is gonna go ahead and be in front of our uh, little staircase area here for a moment. So for a minute, just go ahead and just somewhat follow the staircase round down to here. And then make sure you just sort of go from there and go to the edge of the screen. And likewise from here, go to the edge of the screen. So you can drag and drop your color into that space and fill that in. And again, just get in there, tidy up any bumps and lumps if you need to. Also, 
introduce some more if needs be as well because they sort of like overlap into the path. Now then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to that layer, we're going to tap on it, we're going to add a mask to that too, making sure you're on the mask, your colour is set to black, it's right at the bottom there, and then go to your brush library and go to the soft brush yet again. And just like we did on the left side, we're just going to sort of, with a larger brush size again, about 10%, just blend out at the bottom until you start to reveal the path shape and it's just going to be like a little bit of mist. So we're just going to blend that out. Now I want you to then just reduce your brush size as you get down to sort of this corner here because we want there to be somewhat of a bit of a sort of a, a handover, a handover of what sits in front of what. So into this corner here, yes, there's a little bit of mist and stuff, but then the bush needs to sit in front of the path, of course, because of perspective. So we're just going to sort of wobble our pen into here and create some little areas of little mist and stuff, a little bit of atmosphere and push that across. Blending that out, making sure it doesn't impact the path in any way. So you can do what I just did there and just basically erase into that completely. So you end up with something like this. So we're going to go ahead and replicate what we did here, but over here. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to create a new layer. Now we're not going to clip it. We're going to go to our colors and grab the top color in the third column. Your brush wants to be set back to the dry ink and uh, inking if you're switching between. And your size, you probably want that larger brush size, probably around about sort of 25%. And we're just going to create some lovely bushes. Now they kind of want to sort of come to sort of this point here and then kind of stop. You don't want to let them run too close to um, the uh, fall off there of the mist and the edge of the cliff. So get in here and create some lovely sort of bushy shapes. Leave little gaps in between. But if you don't, just like we did over here and the previous one, you know, you just need to remember what it is you were trying to create and then maybe create some separation lines in a minute with our highlights. And we can add in some larger areas here. We don't need to sort of fill out the entirety of the space, but if you want to, you can do. I'm going to increase the size a little bit over the top of that one. And I want to make sure I'm sort of somewhat creating sort of nice individual sort of shapes. So maybe I'll create like a little smaller bit there, and then maybe this one sort of drifts off to the right and into that gap. Again, we'll fluff up the top of this one and maybe let this one sort of run across a bit more. Maybe it sits in front, it's a bit more dominant. Add in a bit more green on the top there and maybe a little bit in here, just a little bit. Maybe we'll extend this one down and let that run across. I then got this area over here. And again, we'll work on that left area, sort of creating the largest greenest area because this is going to prim be primarily facing our light source. And we'll do another big sort of clump of green in here and then create some smaller sub areas. I'm just flexing the pressure of the pen as we go just to create some nice random shapes. And then just like before, we'll go to our colors and grab the middle color in the third column, switch the size back to 10% and then get started on adding in those lovely green tones on the left hand edges. So creating some lovely big greeny tones, taking a look at the shapes you created and remembering again, what do you think needs to sit in front of what? Do you need to add in the odd sort of tiny little sort of minuscule detail here and there? Don't add too many because it's a little bit sort of further back. So we don't want to sort of flush this out too much with detail because Detail gets progressively lost, of course, as the further you go back with something like this, like further in your landscape, you shouldn't really add too much detail. Zoom out, as always, of course, just to triple check, you're not sort of adding in too much detail in one area. And it also matches up to that other previous area that we created on the left hand side of the path. Just making sure then your levels of detail are pretty consistent. Towards the bottom, we'll leave that one a little bit sort of darker and just flick up a few over here, again, following some of the shapes you created on the top edge of them, adding in that lovely brighter tone. A little something here. We'll do the same over here. I'm going to just let that be one big shape and then maybe a little tail off there. I've got a few at the back here, which I'm going to leave a little bit sort of more skinnier and less sort of colourful. I want that to fade off. And also, we're probably going to lose a little bit of this in a minute when we add a different type of rock. Gonna to go to our colors again and grab the bottom color in that third column. Zoom back in and get started with adding in some brighter details. Again, primarily on that left hand side, just adding in some brighter spots on top of the green, like so. And these are the ones that are getting kissed by the sun. So we can just add in some additional sort of brighter spots on here. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. And you don't have to go all the way to the right, but you can do, it's totally up to you. I'm going to make sure I do go along a few of these. The odd sort of little speck here and there may look quite nice. Maybe that one also gets a little bit of love, but just as simple as that. 
Next, let's go ahead and start to work on a different type of area that's going to fill this scene. It's going to be a cliff over here on the right and also another one in behind here. So we're going to go to our layers. And again, I want you to swipe from left to right on both of these and group them together. And it's up to you. You can collapse the group down and tap on it and flatten it, or you can just go ahead and leave it. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new layer that's going to sit in front of that group that we just created. And we're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here, the middle of the fourth column. And we're going to create like another type of cliff that's going to somewhat sit um, in front of here and behind this area here. And I want it to get quite close to the path. So it's going to somewhat start here, make its way diagonally across this corner. And it's ultimately going to end up here. So you can just sort of create like a, a quite a sharp and steep kind of rock surface like this. And then as long as your start point goes all the way to the right hand side and you've gone edge to edge, you can drag and drop that color into there. Maybe just edge this in a little bit more, creating a bit more of a, you know, quite a blunt kind of shape up and down here. Then we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to it. We're going to go to our colors and grab the top color in that column. So the top of the fourth column. And we're going to brighten up that edge, just creating some fun areas of rock. So we're going to go ahead and go along here at that bottom one there, and then maybe let that kind of swoop in across. Maybe that one was a little bit too long. Maybe we just sort of let that run into here. Maybe we block that in a bit more and then, you know, just let this lovely brush just, you know, create some lovely kind of scrapes and stuff in here. Kind of similar to what we did here where we blended this out at the bottom. We're going to end up doing that in a second. So maybe don't sort of stress over it too much. Bring in maybe this top area here that you know now sits in front of here. And again, maybe block that in and create some cool little sort of scrapes and really nice kind of messy uh, lines in here. Maybe you can introduce some nice big bold areas here and you know create some much needed kind of larger areas of color. And then at the top, maybe we just kind of round this one off and let this one kind of come down on its own. Just creating some lovely flicks from the back of it. And you should end up with something around about this sort of shape. And you don't have to make them all super straight. You can add in sort of the odd sort of bump and lump in here if you want to sort of break up those solid shapes. But a little something like that kind of rocky wise, it kind of swoops down and creates those really awesome colors. Maybe we even just add in the odd kind of small one from the bottom that we can't really see where it goes. And again, just like before, we're going to tap on the layer, tap on it and alpha lock it. We'll go to our colors and we'll grab the bottom color in that fourth column. We'll go to our brush and change it to the soft brush under airbrushing. And again, with a size around about sort of 11%, just blend out from the bottom and blend up towards the top and just kind of fade that out. So you'll lose some of the details a little bit more, but you'll ultimately end up with this lovely rocky surface like this. If you need to at any point, you can go back to your colors and maybe grab the top color in the fourth column, which is the original color, and just sort of brighten up any edges that you feel you want to make sure to get a little bit more love. And if you want to with this layer, you can also go ahead and we can go to our layer here that's got all the line work on it. We can tap on it and add a mask. Again, make sure you're on the mask. Your color set to black. Your brush is still the soft airbrush. You can just maybe blend this out at the bottom and you know fade out some of these lines on the back. And reduce your brush size down to about sort of 7% and just add areas where they kind of fade out. It's totally up to you, but it's a lovely little trick that you can do just to sort of just diminish where the sort of line starts and ends a little bit more. We're then going to go ahead and kind of replicate this in this area over here. So we're going to go to our layers again, select both of those layers by swiping from left to right, group them together, collapse the group down. Now we want to create this layer and it's going to somewhat sit towards the back. So we're going to go down to our little gradient here we created for the sky. We'll create a new layer in front of it. We'll go to our colors and grab the, uh, let's grab the middle color again in the fourth column. Brush wants to go back to inking and that lovely dry ink. And we're going to create another set of sort of rocky areas. Now it's going to somewhat sit in this area here, just as a kind of example, we're going to kind of create something that sits like that almost, you know, some nice sort of higher peaks over here. And then they just fade off into, you know, it could be a valley or anything like that. And so we will go ahead and just start up here. I'm going to create like a bit of a sort of a mound on purpose there, and then just kind of create little shapes. Now what you can do is just create something like this in your, in your sort of layout of things. And then just bring it around on its own and just, you know, maybe that's an easier way of doing it where you just let, you know, you actually create sort of the line work here, for example, and maybe like, you know, here, you know, it just helps you sort of separate those shapes. But we want to go ahead and I'm just going to flatten out a few of these because again, I want it to kind of have that similar aesthetic to the other side that we just did. We're kind of sort of marrying up a lot of styles here. 
And then once you've created that shape, you need to go from your end point all the way around under the path and up towards your starting point. So you can drag and drop the color in, fill in any gaps you need to. And then we'll get started with adding in some color to this too. We will blend this out at the bottom as well eventually. So we'll create a new layer in front. We'll go ahead and I'm gonna not clip it. I'm gonna to go to my colors and grab the top color in the fourth column. I'm gonna get started with adding in some details. Now these don't need to be quite as large as the other ones, of course. These ones are a little bit further back, but we're just trying to wanna to think about just showing someone how does this rocky surface all work? What sits in front of what? What is more dominant? And you know how, you know, you can make little lines like this, just run across and reveal new shapes that sort of sit in the middle. We'll go along here and bring this one down and then again along. So I'm creating like little sort of right, uh, sort of little angles here. And then just adding in a couple of scrapes here and there just to add in some additional detail, you know. Maybe I'll just drag a line out from here and another one down here, keeping it really, really thin with your brush so you can create these lovely sort of cliff top areas. And again, think about areas that you really want to make quite dominant, you know. Maybe I'll keep this one right at the back. So where I create this really quite heavy top mound here, go along that kind of shape and then I'm going to kind of just let that just run down and kind of swoop down on its own and really sit in front of it. I want it to live in front of it and dominate the space a bit more and create a really you know varied up surface so that things do get further back and you can create some sort of shapes that you know only sit at the top ledges here for example and then they just vanish into what would probably be like the back end of something else you know i'll create like a little sort of illusion or sort of nod towards it and just leave it like that you can then stagger things maybe you could even create sort of a, um, another sort of shape off of here to really show that real dominating uh, cliffside a couple of lovely little scrapes down here and there again add in some more especially over here so you've got some lovely areas just being kissed by the light you know, little areas of rock, lovely stuff. Create some more scrapes over here. And then on the back end, maybe just a tiny bit on the top of this little rock here. And then push that to the right hand side. Again, that lighting's on the left, so you know we wanna sort of make sure that that is all nice and consistent. So you've got a lovely little cliff top like this. We can then go ahead and go to the layer, tap on it and alpha lock it. We'll go to our color, we'll grab the bottom color in the fourth column. Your brush wants to be set to the soft brush again under airbrushing and with a 10% just like we did before just blend that out a little bit more towards the bottom creating a lovely gradient of color lovely stuff if you need to again you can always go to the layer tap on it and add a mask and then your settings should all be the correct ones already so maybe you just blend out a few of these lines make them just fall into the the sort of edge of the cliff and just vanish out of, out of sight now we will go ahead and we will create a new layer in front of it. We'll go to our colors and grab the uh, middle color in that far right column. And with the soft airbrush again, we'll just very, very lightly just create a little bit. Now I don't wanna add any in this area here. Anything that I've just drawn in there, let's not try and add anything in that space too much. Because this is technically, if we were to draw in a line here that goes down, that's the edge of the stairs, isn't it? So they'd go all the way down here and you know, you could add in some fun rock just like here if needs be and only add that into here. So we'll just, for example, we'll undo all of those lines. We just want to kind of imagine that all of this is just in the shadows and we, we don't want to try and work it out. If you sort of bring your mist though quite close to where I sort of alluded to there, you really will kind of block that shape in accidentally. So you kind of block in this area in here is almost like the side profile of the stairs. So it's like accidental kind of details. So we'll make that a little bit bigger, about sort of 6% then, just to sort of add in a bit more of a larger glow towards the bottom. Lovely stuff. Now, because we've got that in there, we now want to sort of darken up our shadows. So we're done with that area of cliff. We can swipe from left to right on all three layers and group them together. Again, make the decision if you need to flatten it. But we're going to go to our stairs group. So it's this one here, find your stairs group. And we're going to go to the group. If you flattened it down, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You can create a new layer, tap on it and clip and mask it. We'll go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab the uh, base color, what is essentially the cliff. So it's the middle color in that fourth column. Your brush wants to be set to probably something around about sort of 5%. And we're just going to emphasize these shadows. Let's go a bit smaller than that, about four or three. And we're just going to sort of darken up in here like they are blocking and shading our stairs. So 
just sort of very lightly you don't want to sort of lose the shape entirely but just a little bit of an extra sort of shadow over here push that off to the right likewise here too we're going to go ahead and just use the color that we're working with right now just to kind of shade on the stairs here create a bit more of a sort of shadow that pushes its way over to the right and down here as well you know all the way down the stairs push that in you can make the brush size a little bit larger if you want like a little six percent there and just sort of blend that edge and also we'll just increase the brush size to about nine percent and just darken up the bottom of the frame here almost like a bit of a vignette so we'll just kind of darken up in here like so it runs out of the bottom of the frame so you should end up with a lovely little pathway like this Let's then go ahead now and work on the trees that are going to sit on either side. So we're going to go to our layers, we'll collapse that last layer down. And we want to be in our layers that are going to be just behind here. So we're going to go ahead and the top group is exactly those little bushes. So we're going to go ahead and tap on the group underneath or layer and create a new one. So a new layer underneath these elements here. We'll go to our colours and we're going to get started with adding in those lovely cherry blossom trees. And we're going to grab the bottom colour here in the sixth column. Your brush wants to be dry ink, of course, 10% brush size. So you can start over here and we can just create some lovely sort of swirly, curly lines, you know, one that runs over here. Make sure you grab your start point and maybe just your end point, just maybe make a line just here. And then just, you know, just exaggerate that a little bit more, you know, bring in this area, let that branch just run out. And then you should be able to drag and drop your color in as long as you blocked it in the bottom here. And then from there, just exaggerate this even more, you know, create some extra sort of little lumps and bumps in this sort of uh, main column of this beautiful tree we're going to create. And from there, we're just going to create some lovely sort of swells. So in fact, I'm going to make my brush size the largest size, about 47%, and just create some lovely sort of swells and curls. That's all we want to do is just lots and lots of lovely flicks and just lovely flicks off like that. I'll bring that down down to about sort of 10% again, just to, because we're getting a little bit higher, we want the sort of um, shapes to get a little bit thinner as they make their way away from the tree. These are ultimately gonna be hidden, but it's just like these extra details that you can create. So we'll just create sort of lovely swirly lines and then just let that one just run all the way over here. And then this will be my final highest one. And then from there, we'll just thicken this up towards the bottom and just go back over it, trying to thicken it up so it's consistently a little bit thicker towards the bottom and then from there you can just create more curly swirly lines lovely little flicks and curls like that and then maybe we'll create another curl here and then at the top we'll just sort of follow that spiral and curl out on the left and I think that is pretty much it or maybe just create like a lovely curl off of that one and another little curl off of here too so that should be sort of the basis of your tree. We're then gonna go ahead and create a new layer in front of it. We'll go to our colors. We will go ahead and grab this color here, the middle color in that column. So the middle color in the sixth column. And we're gonna create some really simple basic shapes for them as well. So we're just gonna somewhat start over here. You kind of wanna create like a big sort of blanket kind of shape like this. And then the bottom area of it, make it nice and wobbly. So like, like curly and wobbly, lovely sort of jitters in there. And then drag and drop the color in. And that is essentially all we want to do and create for our cherry blossoms. Maybe I'll get in there and just try and create less of sort of a big blobby look to it, like a little bit more sort of finer bumps and lumps in there. So just get back in there if you need to and just refine some of the shape, make it a little bit less sort of, um, like I said, large curls and not enough sort of mini, mini areas of detail. Then what we'll do is we'll go to the layer, we'll create a new layer in front of it and tap on it and clip it to that shape. We'll go to our colors and grab the top color in the sixth column and we'll add in a lovely big highlight. So we're gonna follow the top edge and then just create sort of the swirls and curls and stuff like into the area of the sort of leaves and then maybe the odd sort of smaller one down here. Just making its way on the top edge, keeping it really sort of mini, uh, sort of minimalistic is what I'm trying to look for. Minimalistic with your details, just a little something like this. And then all we're going to do is create another one. So we'll go to our layers and create another new layer. In your color, change it back to the middle color in that sixth column and create another kind of shape, somewhat similar kind of aesthetic to it, but you know, vary up the shape. So maybe up here, I'll sort of create like a much more wonky look to it, but ultimately it kind of has that lovely bouncy look at the bottom as well. So again, I'll probably end up addressing the shape, but just a little something like this that kind of runs out into a point. You can drag and drop your color in. 
then you can take a look at it and just you know adjust some of these little wobbles and shakes in here and make them less rounded. Feel free to reduce the brush size if you need to as well to something a little bit more fine if you want to create some lovely finer areas down here. I'm just going to wobble my pen into here, vary that up. And just like before, we'll go to the layer, we'll tap on it and we'll create a new layer. Tap on it and clip it to it. Go to the colours and go to the top of the sixth column and add in that brighter highlight up here. So we'll just wiggle our pen along that top edge, creating some lovely variation. And then just like inside the shape, you know, just add in a few little extra areas of colour and then maybe another one that sort of runs off from here. Don't go towards the bottom, but just a little something like this. And if your sort of shapes are nice and varied up to each other, you can tap on the layer that's clipped to it and merge it down. And then likewise on the one underneath, tap on the sort of highlight and merge it down. And if they are sort of somewhat quite, you know, unique, you can swipe them to the left and duplicate them and just be a little bit naughty and just scale this down in size, rotate it a little bit if you need to. And, you know, maybe move this one up towards the top here or, you know, over to the left hand side where it's out of view a little bit more. So I could maybe move this one to here. And then I will go back to the other one, swipe that to the left and duplicate it and just continue to fill out the tree. By all means, if you feel like you want to go ahead and sort of uh, create individual shapes, I uh, more than encourage you to uh, do exactly that. But ultimately, you should be able to just swipe it to the left and duplicate it and uh, just scale it down in size here and there. Make it progressively get smaller towards the top and just make sure you don't get any that are too sort of close to each other and too repetitive, you know. You want to kind of stack them in front of each other, leave little gaps, but make sure, you know, there isn't two of the same one beside one another. So I'll maybe sort of scale this one up in size and put that there. I'll swipe the main shape to the left and scale that down in size too. Bring that up towards the top. I'll rotate it even, you know, give it a little bit of an angle, make it sort of dip down towards the right a bit more. I'm going to go and grab this one. So I'm going to continue just making my way through this part and, you know, I'll keep it in the video, of course. As I always do, I never skip ahead. Move this one over, say to there. And then I'm gonna grab that main shape again, duplicate that and probably try and just sort of squeeze one in here, just so it's not sort of too empty. Um, you may need to just adjust some other layers if needs be. You wanna leave a little bit of your, um, your you know, branches exposed, but not too much. So maybe this one just sits like perfectly in that gap. And I might even swipe that to the left again and duplicate it and just make it a little bit smaller, very small, fine one at the top, rotate that to the left, give it a little bit more of an angle that points away from everything. And I think you do just about get away with sort of duplicating all of those shapes and creating a lovely fine tree up there. Now we're going to go ahead then, and once you're happy with it all, you may want to go ahead and just select all of those layers. We we'll then want to go ahead and pinch them together. So pinch all of the sort of uh, leave layers together. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my cursor and just uniform that up in size just a little bit more. And maybe a little bit further down. That'll do. And then what we'll do is we'll swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it. We're going to go ahead then on the top one, we'll change the blend mode from normal, we'll change it to multiply, which is going to make it nice and dark. And on this one, we will go ahead and just erase. So we'll grab our eraser with the soft airbrush and the airbrushing. Brush size probably around about sort of 16%. We're just gonna blend out at the bottom. So we're gonna blend out and then just create a lovely gradient. So it's a little bit darker at the top and a little bit lighter towards the bottom. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will duplicate this tree. So we're gonna swipe from left to right on all three of these layers and group them together. We're gonna to collapse the group down. I don't want you to flatten it just yet. Tap on the layer and we're going to swipe it to the left even and duplicate it. Grab your cursor, flip it horizontally and move it across to this side over here. And I'm just going to rotate that a tiny bit to give it a little bit of a different angle. And I want it to sit behind here as well. And it doesn't really need to impede on the screen quite so much as the other one. You know, maybe this one's a little bit smaller, a little bit further away. It just needs to sort of branch in a little bit from the side there. And tap on your cursor when you're done. Now I didn't want you to flatten it because this layer we're actually going to go ahead and open it up and the top layer that we created that dark transition we're actually going to sort of invert that. We're going to go ahead and scroll down in our blend modes until we get to the option of screen which is just going to make it a little bit lighter at the top and then darker at the bottom which is going to be sort of the inverse of that side because the lighting is going to come from behind this tree hit this one but this one's then going to be sort of shadowed out a little bit. 
So you should end up with this lovely little scene here with your two trees. At this point, you're more than welcome to tap on them and flatten them down. We're going to create another set of sort of background elements before we get into sort of the mountain area. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here, the top of the second column. And we're going to create some more bushes. So we are on a new layer right towards the back, which we are. And we're just going to create some sort of bushy areas over here. So I'm going to probably make, uh, now do you know what, I'll keep my brush size the same from it. I'm just going to create sort of lovely, rounded, fluffy shapes in here, go all the way around and down towards the bottom. You don't want to reveal your shape in here. If you do, it's fine. Just make sure your start point goes to the left of the screen. And then that also goes to the edge of the screen. So you can drag and drop into there. And just grab your eraser and just erase this space down here. You don't want to occupy that area. And likewise, you may need to go ahead and just make sure it's nice and erased there too. And then go to the layer, create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to it. Go to your colors. I'm going to grab this color here in the bottom right of the palette. Brush wants to still be the dry ink. And we're just going to add some just fluffy random sort of shapes onto the top of here as if they're kind of like bushes or even like just a you know, forest or something, you know, woodland on the top edge, perfectly on the top if you can, so that you're, um, when I say top edge, I mean as in just facing upwards so that we can just duplicate this layer in a second and get away with kind of just like the trees, just being a little bit naughty and duplicating it. Now with this layer, we're also going to go ahead and tap on it and mask it with a mask on. Your brush wants to be set to the soft brush and the airbrushing and just blend out this bottom edge here. This is so far in the distance, we don't want to add in too many fine details. Just sort of fade that out. And we're also going to go ahead and go to the layer and drop the opacity down to something around about sort of the 60% mark. Once you've done that, you can then pinch those two layers together, swipe to the left and duplicate it. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our cursor. We will flip it horizontally and we'll move it just over into this sort of space back here as well. So just up here right at the very back and tap on your cursor when you're done. If you see any excess like I do, just grab your eraser, blend that space out, making sure it's just erode, eroded right down and also just erode, erode, erase into here, creating like a little bit of a soft glow from the bottom. So it blends into the background. We'll also do the same over there. So we'll go back to that layer. We'll reduce that brush size down to about 8% and just sort of blend into here, trying to follow on that sort of misty look. So just separating the layers a little bit up in the clouds. Let's then go ahead and add in the mountain in the background. It's really going to be quite easy to do that. Um, you can swipe from left to right on both of those background elements and group them together. You can definitely flatten them or pinch them together onto one layer if you like. We'll then go ahead and create a new layer, drag it down in front of our gradient there at the back again. Go to your colors and grab the bottom color here in the second column from the right. Your brush wants to go back to dry ink, of course, and we're going to create a very simple mountain shape that is going to sort of peak just here. And it's going to finish on that middle horizontal axis, so left and right there. And so I'm going to leave the peak mark there. It's always quite handy to do that. But what you want to do is as you come in, you kind of just slowly want to sort of uh, graduate towards creating a little bit more of a steeper point at the top. You want to create a bit of a kind of surface flat edge almost at that peak and then from there we're going to go ahead and just go down the opposite side and then just let that kind of drift out on the right maybe i've gone a bit too sharp there so maybe i'll just sort of smooth that line out a bit more and as long as you've gone edge to edge and your line's somewhat solid enough you should be able to drag and drop your color into this bottom space here notice how all of your sort of details now have changed to blue we don't want that so we're going to go ahead and grab our eraser, make sure it's still set to the soft airbrush, which it is about sort of 14% and go left to right. Make sure we get rid of all of those spaces where we wanted our lovely little bit of mist. And we're going to increase the size up to about sort of 15, 14% there and just blend up until you start to reveal sort of uh, the background glow in behind these two areas here. So making sure everything in this bottom area has got that lovely misty look. You go left to right till you get into that space there. Then we're going to go to that layer. We're going to create a new layer in front of it. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab the top color here in the uh, second column from the right. We're going to go to our brush. We're going to go to the soft brush and we're going to make it quite large. Soft airbrush again, about sort of 25% and go left to right. Just introducing 
a lovely gradient of blue that's going to sort of transition from that dark blue down towards this lovely blue here. Now make sure you go to this layer, tap on it and clipping mask it also. Now for the mountains, the, the actual sort of uh, snow on the top is going to be really simple. We're going to tap on the base shape here, create a new layer so it clips itself in that gap. Go to your colors, grab the middle color in that second column from the right. Brush wants to go back to our dry ink, of course. And we're just going to imagine that sort of this peak here, everything to the left is nice and snowy, everything to the right is going to be a slightly more muted tone. And we'll get started with sort of blocking in this top area here, and then maybe we kind of follow this ridge line down here and then just let the snow just sort of trickle off and block in the top area up here only. And then maybe it kind of just follows like a ridge line down here, falls off completely. And then just a couple of sort of smaller lines of snow as they make their way down. Uh, I just want to sort of create like a, a snow cap at the top here, but just enough that it's it's enough to show it's quite snowy, but nothing too sort of intense. I don't want you to sort of spend in too much time creating a mountain top. I want it to have that snowy cap look and that's it really. Lovely little something like this. And then a couple of little sort of streaks off will look great. And just like before, you can grab your eraser, you can blend out any line. So I've got the soft airbrush there about sort of 6%, just blend them out especially as they sort of get a little bit lower, you can just fade them out. And then go to your layers and create another new layer. Go to your colors and grab the top color in that second column from the right. Your brush wants to go back to the dry ink again. And we'll go ahead and just darken up the backside of it with this sort of other variation of the snow. So we'll follow those sort of lines that we created and then just branch out kind of the opposite. So these are kind of like areas in the snow, but they're on the back end of the mountain. So we can't really see them quite as sort of detailed and as bright and white as the other side. So I'm just kind of just creating lovely long streaks on that back end. Arguably because this is facing the uh, shadowed side a lot more, it would potentially have a little bit more of this sort of solid shape to it. So you can you can get away with leading, leaving, should I say, quite a bit more in there. And then also just underneath some of these areas over here, you can just introduce kind of like this additional color tone in here. Well, we're just adding in some extra sort of variation in the colors on this side. And then just like before, we'll go ahead and grab our eraser, just blend those lines out. I don't want them to be too uh, prominent as they fade down the mountain, a little something like this. Just blend those little colors out like so. And you can always go ahead and rearrange your layers and move that color underneath the sort of yellowy brighter tone so that they sit on top. And you can always go back to that color this color here, the middle color in that second column from the right. Same dry ink again and just, just add in the odd occasional little area here that just overlaps the top of it. So you kind of just blend the two areas together, which looks really, really cool. And then maybe there's like a little sort of snowy ledge here. Just a couple on that little transition point between one side and the other. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just sort of block in another sort of long streak here, just to kind of just fill that out a bit more and then grab my arrays and just blend it out. Lovely stuff. That's going to be our mountain. So at this point, we just now need to add in our main focal point. So we're going to go to our layers and we want to put this in front of uh, quite a few different layers. So what we'll do is for a minute, we will go ahead and find what is, uh, let's have a look. We're going to find that tree on the left hand side. We're going to tap on it and then tap on the group underneath and create a new layer. That's where we want to position this. Now for a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to hold down on the layer, turn everything else off. We don't want to see anything else for a minute. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here, the top color in the third column from the right. So the first thing we want to do is grab our selection tool. We're going to make sure we've got the rectangle option selected and color fill is turned on. We're going to create two columns. Now, don't worry if they're like a pixel or two off. It's not really a big deal, but look at where my grid is and my positioning of it. So we're going to create a column that runs down to here and you can see the gap on the left. And when you let go, it'll fill it in. And what we can do is we can kind of do one side first and then duplicate it and move it across. So we'll be on this line perfectly and create a bit of a wider sort of uh, point at the bottom here, a bit of a foundation. If we zoom in on that again, I just want to then create like a little extra step here as well. So a little sort of block like so. So we're creating that first column. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tap on our selection tool when we're done once we've created that. Go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it and grab your cursor and move it over to the right hand side. So what that you marry up sort of the gap from here to here as the same as there. So I'll just move that across a bit more. And if you go ahead and turn on snapping at the bottom, 
when you move it across, you should get three blue lines, which lets you know you've perfectly moved that horizontal. It'll kind of hold it in place for you. Then we'll go to our layers, we'll create another new layer. And we can actually group all of these together for a minute. So swipe from left to right and group them. So we've got it ready to merge down. On this new layer, we're gonna go ahead and grab our selection tool yet again. We're gonna create a middle kind of beam that's gonna run through and it's gonna exceed this line here a little bit. We're gonna go along here to this point here. And once you've blocked in that, you can let go. And then at the sort of base of these columns here, just like we did before, kind of add like another sort of step, another little step. So I'm zooming in, making sort of a, a little extra bit here, like so. We tap on our selection tool and turn that off for a minute. We'll go to our layers and create another new layer. We will go ahead and we will grab one of these columns that we created, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and move it into the center of your design. You'll get this orange line here. And again, you want those blue lines horizontally to let you know you've moved it perfectly across. If you tap on your, your cursor, should I say, grab your selection tool, but turn off color fill for a minute and then just select all of this bottom area. You can go ahead and go to the layer, tap on it and clear it. And then you've got a column in the middle that's perfectly the same as the other ones. We're then gonna create the lovely little arc at the top. Now we can do this in a couple of different ways. We're gonna go ahead and draw it in with the monoline brush. So we're gonna to go to our brush and we're gonna to go to monoline. It's under calligraphy and the monoline brush. Size is gonna be set to about sort of 6%. And we're gonna create an arc that somewhat just is a slight little bit narrower than this. And we'll draw an arc and then we'll edit the arc afterwards. So you wanna create a little bit of an arc like this. Hold your pen down so you can get that arc. And then at the top here, tap on edit arc. And you can move three points. You can move the middle point you can move the far left point and the far right point. And we want our arc to run through these corners here. So that corner and that corner, and also make sure it marries up so it sits on that center line of your grid. And once you've done that, you should have a nice sort of somewhat symmetrical arc here. If we go to that layer and we swipe it to the left and duplicate it, then grab your cursor. We'll go ahead and with the uniform option, just scale that up in size just a little bit and then move it into the center of your design. So you get this orange line in the middle. And so it's slightly higher than the one you created before. So a little something like this. Tap on your cursor when you're done. We're then gonna go ahead and we're gonna swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it again. We're gonna go ahead and grab our cursor yet again and scale that up in size once more and then move that up and above that again. So it's a little bit wider than sort of the, the adjustment we made before. So it's like the widest point at the top here. And again, position it in that center point. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Now, what we'll then do is we'll need to pinch all three of these layers together. Your background and everything else we've already created will pop back in. So for example, if I pinch these three layers together, I just need to hold down on the tick here for the group of the arc that we're creating here, and it will sort of bring it all back. We'll go ahead and link these points together. So we're gonna go ahead and create a bit of a curve here. So a little bit of a curve and link them together. I held my pen down there to create a nice perfect arc, and I'll do the same on the opposite side. I'll go ahead and create an arc, hold my pen down so I can adjust it and link the two together. Now here, what we wanna go ahead and do is we wanna exaggerate sort of this curve here. So start here, for example, and just drag that out a little bit more. And you may wanna go up here, tap on it and change it from a line to an arc if it didn't sort of arc for you. And you want this line to nicely follow the curvature of what we did before. And then just maybe adjust sort of the angle of it a little bit. So it sticks out. And then once you're done, just join these two points together. So it created a bit of a sort of con continuous line up to here, joined these two together. We'll do the same over here. So we'll go ahead and create like a bit of an arc here. Just hold your pen down if you need to, and then tap on it and change it to an arc. Just exaggerate that a tiny bit. Doesn't need to be perfect to the other side and then just join these points together. We'll do it with a straight line though, so it matches up to the other side. Zoom out. And then we can go ahead and drag and drop the color into these spaces here. We've got this lovely little sort of uh, monument. Now, at this point, we can tap on the group. We can go ahead and flatten it into one layer. You'll bring everything back in. And now we can get started with positioning it in our actual scene. So we can grab our cursor. We can go ahead and uniform this down in size. We wanna go ahead and position it up here. Now we wanna sort of scale this down in size a little bit. So it fits, of course, into our scene. But what we also want to do is sort of have it pointing off to the left a bit more. So we're going to grab distort. We're going to grab sort of the bottom right node and sort of pivot that out and grab the top right node as well. Drag that up. 
we can squish it down a bit more horizontally as well. And we want this sort of stump here to sort of sit in front of those rocks that we created. Now, don't worry about this side. We're going to erase this in a second. We just want to make sure that it has that little bit of an angle to it, a little bit of a grand look to it, and it's pointing off to the left. You may need to collapse sort of this side down a bit more as well and make it a little bit more narrow just so it fits your scene a little bit more. I'm just going to make sure that that's not too overdone. Or something like that. And now I'll tap on my cursor when I'm done. And as I mentioned, this now sits in the wrong space. So we can go ahead and just grab our eraser. We want to tap on it and go to the option of inking and dry ink. And any brush size, as long as it's small, about sort of 7%, just erase here until you start to reveal the bush uh, area here. So the bush then sits in front. We're, we're constantly trying to sort of marry up everything. Now I actually need to just move mine to make sure that this stump, as I said, sits on that area here. So I'll have to do that twice. I'll just move that down, get into here, erase that. Now I'm also going to go ahead and just somewhat flatten off the bottom area here as well. So your monument is now in its position. Let's go ahead and add some lovely little bits of color to it. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new layer in front of it, tap on it and clipping mask it. And again, we'll swipe from left to right on both and group them together. We'll go to our colors. We'll grab the middle color in that third column from the right. And we'll add in some lovely little sort of easy highlights again with our brush set to the dry ink and that 10% size light source is on the left. So we're going to go ahead and sort of draw in a line that kind of runs all the way along here. A little something like this. We'll go ahead and we'll add in a light source that goes all the way down to here. Now, don't worry about this stump down here. We're going to change the color of this shortly to blue. So we're just trying to add in the light sources on here. And with it being a bit of a downward color, uh, sort of uh, highlight even the light source. You don't want to add anything under here, for example. You want to leave a little bit of a gap where that's going to essentially be shaded in. Just like I've done, done here. We'll do the same over here. We'll just sort of bring in the highlight down to sort of this point. And if you want to, you can sort of maybe streak in the odd additional sort of line in here of detail, of color. You know, anything that you feel is sort of necessary and matches up and marries up to the rest of the scene. Then at the top, we'll go ahead and create a beautiful big highlight along the top edge here. So sort of curve that round and let that sort of bow out on the right. We can't necessarily add anything into here. The only thing we could do is just bring in like a little bit of light here that as it gets towards the middle, just sort of fades out a little bit more like so. And we'll block in the sort of area here. So I just want to sort of undo that again. Just bring that shape in that we created before. We can block that in and then just let that kind of just shade on top of that one. Lovely stuff. And then back here, we will add just like a little bit of highlight, but nothing too crazy. Then what we'll do is we'll go to our colors. We'll go ahead and grab the highlight tone, which I want it to be this one here, the top of the fifth column. And we will just sort of back up those highlights even more with this beautiful bright light source on the top. And then like a little bit along here as well, a little bit along this edge, and then a couple of little extra sort of streaks of light along here as well. So just some really lovely bright highlights on there. Then as I mentioned, we're gonna adjust the stump. So we'll go to our colors, we will go ahead and we'll grab this color here, the bottom of that second column from the right and just literally just block it in, make it nice and blue. We'll block it in and make it nice and blue. And then we'll go to our colors and grab the top color in that second column from the right. And then what we'll do is we'll just zoom in here and we'll block in the left side just as we did above and then maybe just add in a little bit on the flatter surface here just to show that change in sort of uh, step there. And then maybe just a little bit here on there. Now the other thing I wanna do is just add in a bit of a shadow here and also extend the ground a little bit. So if we go to our layers, we wanna go ahead and find the layer that's got all of our steps in it. So if we go ahead and find that, which is gonna be this one here, if you collapse it down onto one layer, it's totally fine. All you wanna do is maybe create a new layer and we'll drag it underneath the step. So try and get it in the group. If it doesn't go in the group, it's fine. Go to your colors and grab this color here. So we want the top of the fifth column. Just extend that ground out a little bit more. And I'm also gonna somewhat sort of sharpen up the ground. So I want it to go all the way just in behind here, like so. And then we need to add in a bit of a shadow there. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll collapse that down to our stairs and create a new layer in front of it. Then go to your colors. We'll grab the bottom color here in the uh, third column from the right. And we're just gonna somewhat just shade in behind here and then just sort of just 
push along a little bit, just creating a bit of a trailing shadow. Uh, just a little something like this, just to add in a little bit of extra sort of blending it into our environment. Now at this point, you're technically done. You can leave it exactly this. However, you may wanna add in some really like lovely light sources. So we can go to our layers and we wanna create a new layer that sits behind this tree here on the left and it's there. So at the minute, my trees are set up where in my layers, I've got this tree on the left and then above it, I've got the other tree. I wanna swap that around. So I'm gonna grab the tree that's on the left and drag it above. Now in between these two trees, I'm gonna tap on the tree that's now on the right, create a new layer, and I'm gonna create another new layer. So I've got two here ready to go. The bottom one out of these two layers, we're gonna go ahead and change the blend mode from normal, change it to lighter color. Once we've got lighter color, we're gonna to go to our colors. I'm going to grab the top color here in the fifth column. Brush wants to be set to the soft airbrush under airbrushing. I'm going to make it fairly large, maybe around about sort of 40%. And just in behind here, we're going to go around in a circular motion, creating a big, long stretch of color, brighten it up most over here, and blending that across the screen. Now, what you're going to end up doing here is you're going to just blend that across onto here. And this one's now behind or in front of our light source. So therefore, it's becoming a bit more of a silhouette. And you've got this lovely little stretch of light across here. Again, this is totally optional. You may like the stronger contrast of before. If we go to our next layer above, we change the blend mode from normal. We change it to add. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add in a flare. So we're going to go to our colors or brush even. We're going to go down to the option of luminance. We're going to use the flare at a maximum size. And we're going to create one just in behind here. So you're going to need to tap. Now, let's just tap over here. And I want to tap until it's a light on. Now at the minute it's very, very bright, of course. If we go to the layer and change the blend mode and drop it down to 60%, you should end up with a much lighter sort of glow across the screen, but you end up with that light source from that left-hand side. And you can tinker with both of those layers. You can maybe drop the lighter color down a little bit more, maybe down to sort of 70%, and also drop your flare down as well to maybe sort of 55. It's totally up to you and how much contrast you wanna show in this scene here. But you just end up with that lovely glow coming across the screen. And another final touch we're going to add, we're going to create another new layer. We're going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to grab this middle color here in the fourth column from the right. Your brush wants to be set back to uh, inking and dry ink. And we're going to keep it about 10 for a minute. We're going to try and find some steps that are in the light source. So like a little bit over here, a couple here, and in this area here, most definitely just a couple of streaks from left to right, nice and horizontal. And we're gonna just blur this one out. We're gonna add in some additional lighting on these steps. So just a few that are in the light source, just a few like this. Lovely little extra details, just to vary up those stairs. And then if we go ahead and change the blend mode again from normal and change it to the option of add, we'll really brighten that up. And we can just tinker with that and maybe drop it down to maybe sort of 40% to add in some lovely variation in these steps. And you can get back in there and maybe block in some more, a little bit more if you feel that that's necessary. Just a few extra sort of brighter spots on the stairs. Really, especially in this area here, you, know, you can really sort of tinker in there and add in much more detail if needs be. Now I've gone ahead, just so you can see, I've dropped my opacity of my sort of big glow to 29% and my flare has been dropped down to, I'll drop it down to 45% and that way it's a nice sort of balance between the contrast and the light sources. And if we go ahead and we, you'll need to go up to your actions and turn off your drawing guide. If we pinch with two fingers and we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, please be sure to let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. Drop a like while you're down there and make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram and you can do one better and share your design in my Discord. There's a link in the description down below. And as always, a massive shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Patrons get access to a catalog now of over 80 exclusive tutorials. With three added every single month, the catalog just continues to grow. So be sure to hit the link in the description down below and check out all the tutorials you unlock when you become a patron. Get your name featured in videos, sneak peeks, early access, and much, much more. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one here on the screen now. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one.